Hey guys, welcome back. I want to share with you guys today a few resources that I use for C-Risk, how I passed it, how I kept on going at it in order to get to where I am today. I received my official, official uh, results because it takes 10 days and it took exactly 10 days. I don't know what, what takes so long, especially for our online proctor exam in their actual facilities. So uh, 10 days is pretty extreme unless, you know, they're dealing with a lot, but you know, usually I'm just so used to other certification where they notify you on the spot. If you pass, you pass. If you fail, you failed, but not wait 10 days. So go and figure. Anyway, let me share with you the exact details of what I received uh, when I log into my portal. So I passed on May 10th. Uh, 477 was my score, my overall score. Now, I just want to share with you the full details of this because I'm not too happy with the two sections, the two domains that I did not felt like I, I passed, obviously, right? Because 450 is passing. And I felt like I should have at least gotten 450 for each domain at minimum, but I didn't, right? Okay. So governance, I got 558. <clears throat> obviously, that, that boosted my overall score. IT risk assessment, I got 447. I'm three points away from actual uh, passing because for again 450 is what the passing score is but not the overall score and uh risk response and reporting 435 which i did horribly in and uh information technology and security 522 which is great to have these numbers but the downside to all this when i was taking the exam i felt really confident i thought i like aced it uh, obviously i did not because 450 is passing 477 is what i got and 800 is like perfect score, right? So I, I'm nowhere near that. And I'm, I'm, I was borderline failing almost, but I didn't feel like that during the exam. I felt really confident. And I probably only felt that way because of my governance that I felt so confident that I was hitting like, you know, 558 and also information technology and security. But for the other two, I didn't recall, I probably marked I think I marked about 16 questions out of the 150 in total, but I changed maybe a handful and I got scared because even during my practice exams, uh, when I was taking these questions, I started changing questions and I got them wrong. And it, usually from, from myself, I noticed that, you know, the first answer that you, you know, go on and answering with would be most of the times accurate, if that makes any sense. So I was like, ah, oh, shoot, you know, and I, I just stopped. I said, all right, I'll, I'll review the questions, but it, most of the times it was really 50-50 and I was really just guessing at that point because there was really nothing else to go by. Like I couldn't just, you know, do any kind of math or, or technical evaluation to say, okay, it's, it's this answer specifically and only this answer. It was like the best of, right? And or the, you know, um, yeah, usually it's like the best solution or the best uh, question or the best, you know, scenario, whatever it was. It was like you always had to choose the best one out of all of them. And it always came down to 50-50. And you could probably always hear that. It always come down to 50. The other two is like, all right, you know for a fact it's it's not any of those. And uh, when you come down to just having 50-50, it's, it's, it's so hard to even determine what it was. So anyway, let me share with you guys. My main course of study was on the Udemy. I watched and listened to a lot of these videos and also uh, the questions. Uh, thanks came from here as well. Uh, I did do the Hermang Doshi one, which is great in my opinion. Uh, I would I would say in the beginning I wasn't too thrilled about it, and that only had to do with you know the audio of it, and I wasn't used to the accent. All right, and I'll play a preview of of what that sounds like. But there was another one, which was like the IT Pro TV guys. Great video, great explanation, but it just didn't have enough substance, I felt like. It was just so broad. And I feel at certain times, they would just go off topic. Like, it's just unrelatable, right? They'll talk stuff about like, they'll give examples to these, you know, risk and governance topics with like AWX explanations and their real life work experience which I feel like Isaka is trying to avoid 
and you using your work experience to answer these questions because they want your mindset to be focused on Isaka specific. So let me just play a preview. I loved it in the beginning. This is the IT Pro TV guys, and it, they changed it to ACI Learning now, whatever it is. And I'll just play a quick preview of what it sounds like. Systems control. I'm your host through a portion uh, of this uh, course series. My name is Wes Bryan, and I've been a technical instructor for better than a decade. I hold primary domains that are in the C-Risk environment in the C-Risk certification. So I had to play these videos at like 1.25 or 1.5 speed because they just spoke so slow. And of course, they, they were enunciating every single word, so you understood it. So that way, you know, you can absorb it a little bit more. But I felt like because of this, uh, the, this course specifically, I've actually watched these courses, the entire course. And I believe this one was, I forget how many hours this one was in total. Uh, it wasn't short. Let's just uh, 16 and a half hours over here. 16 and a half hours. I, I watched the, the entire thing and all these different chapters. It didn't have a lot of substance. It was like an overall, like very general topic. So you could understand what was involved or what's going to be consisted of in the exam. And I was like, okay, all right, it's, it's cool. But definitely I don't feel like that was enough to get into the exam and, and go take it and, and expect they pass, all right? Now, the Doshi one, on the other hand, I I watched both, right? And this one is uh, 14 hours, so, you know, only shy of two hour difference, but it took me a little while to absorb this one, all right? There was two factors to this. One, I said, because of the... The audio isn't very professional. You, you hear kids screaming and you hear like, you know, dogs barking and cars passing. It's like it, it, it's you need like a, a noise cancellation kind of like microphone or headphones or something like that. And then the, the second part to that was if you increase the speed on this and because of his accent, it becomes almost like I couldn't understand him sometimes. Because the way he enunciates certain words, it's not the same as how we speak or how I speak or for how I would understand it. So uh, I, I'm, I'm drawing a blank to some of the examples right now. But when you hear it, you'll know it, right? It, it's just like it. that's what he just said. And then I had to go back and I had to look at the actual uh, the, the question itself because it, it's all written out. And then I hear it and then I compare that to what he just said, then I was like, oh, that's what he meant, right? So there was a lot of times it was like that. So let's let's just take a quick listen. Uh, let's pick something that's a little more uh, re relevant to the CRIS domain. So let's let's click on this one. IT risk. In this register. video, we will discuss about IT risk register. In this video, we will discuss what is the risk register? It, it's a little slower, so I, w I was able to play certain videos at a higher speed, but you have to be careful with that because you hear that audio, that feedback, and, and uh, the, it, it got really annoying, especially if you're wearing headphones. If you're listening off a PC speaker, it's not as bad because you don't hear the, the quality of the audio because once you start hearing the, the quality of the audio, you're going to be like, what the hell is this? Right? It's like, oh, it, it's too much. It's too much. But uh, I've done it. I, I've forced myself to do it. Uh, again, uh, when I listen to these videos or watch these videos, uh, even though they're actual videos, I just listen to the audio a bit sometimes because I watch it over and over again. There will be some chapters that I actually focus on and rewatch it multiple times because I'm trying to pick up on it. Uh, IT risk, risk register is one of them. And when it got down to like some of the technical stuff, I, I knew, uh, you know, because I, I've taken the CISSP, some of it does overlap. And I would say, yeah, all right, I know it. That's fine. Uh, CIA principles, like those are all like really spread across the whole cybersecurity certification uh, exams for any of them. So a lot of these are pretty relevant amongst each other and, and it's kind of on repeat. But there are certain aspects of it that's not, and I'll focus on that, all right? And uh, some of the hard copy resources, uh, one of them was this, the serious questions and answers and explanations. Now, this sixth edition specifically, I did not buy new. I bought it used off of eBay. I think I bought it for like 45 or 50 bucks. Still expensive for a used book, but this was 
great, okay? Now, but the questions were definitely a lot more deeper than what was presented in the exam. On the actual exam, when you go in there, I'm not giving away any specifics, is that it'll be like a one-liner. Like, if this was to happen, what would you choose? And then you get your four questions. Now, with this resource here, with this question, like, it is tons of questions. I went through the entire book, 600 questions of it, because it says it right here, 600 questions. It was a lot for each domain. It was broken down to like 150 plus or so questions. And then, because there's only four domains, the questions were so deep, it was like reading a short story, right? And it'll have like four questions to five questions, uh, four sentences, sorry, four sentences to five sentences for a, a one question. And the, the, it's only the last part that even makes relevance to what you need to answer the other three questions or two quite uh two i keep saying questions the other two sentences or three sentences prior to the last sentence will be like okay just it means nothing they're just telling a story so you have a idea visually what they're trying to ask for okay so i thought this was a great way to understand the topics for each of the domains I would say I would definitely go by this, uh, this Q&A, definitely, more so than this thing. So I got this book. I read it. You know, it's, it's cheap, but you could get it cheaper if you get it used, uh, especially if you reach out to me. I have both of these resources. But if anyone's interested, just let me know, and we could work something out, and I can probably, like, you know, sell it to you for, like, dirt cheap. You pay for shipping or something like that, all right? Uh, if, if you're interested, you can reach out to me. So uh, you probably won't end up wanting this from me because I'm telling you that this wasn't that great. It's great to read and, you know, have an overview of what to expect on the exam, but this will not help you on the exam. I'm just going to put that out there. Uh, it had really good high ratings, and, and that's probably the reason why I chose it. But if you were to solely rely on this one resource, because it's like half an inch, you know, it's not a lot of pages to, to read. It's very short. It's 276. Come on, it's 276 pages. That's like, shoot. I, 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 you know, just comparing that to like the CISSP, it's like, like one tenth of it, you know? So I, I'm reading and I'm like, I don't know if, now that I go back and I'm looking at it, I'm I'm looking at it and reading it and I'm like, there's no way this answered any of the, would have helped me answer any of the questions on the exam. So I, I definitely would have probably failed if I only relied on this. Um, I feel like, you know, especially with a topic such as this, which is related to, you know, compliance, governance and risk and all that. And for it to be only in like less than 300 pages is, I find that odd. Now, uh, this one, and, you know, just based on the questions, because of the way they were asking the question, I mean, it's 302 pages, it, it just seems a lot more. It's like 10 times thicker, and not 10 times, but like it's like triple the size and, and thickness because it's 302 pages. I don't know, how how is this 302 pages? It definitely felt like it was more pages than that. Um, but it, it's a larger book for sure, a larger book for sure. I wish I, I had it here with me to show you guys the difference. But... Anyway, that's that's pretty much it. I wanted to share that with you guys. Uh, that's my overview of the C risk exam and how I, you know, I finally passed it. But you know, I, I don't do anything really special about it. But uh, you know, I'm gonna start slapping it on my profile. I'm slapping it on my resume, and hopefully, it'll get me some uh, uh, reward points for for accomplishing this certification. All right, guys. I appreciate you guys. Uh, like always, I, I do have a couple calls scheduled today. Uh, hopefully, uh, it'll be nice to meet you know some of the subscribers and, and discussing some roadmaps with you one on one um, and, and see where that takes you. All right, thank you, and I'll see you guys again really soon. Take care.